your program precisely to match with the continuity of visual to the best of the pattern on the sound effects. And last but not least, and possibly the most important, fire, which needs to be ignited at a precise moment. That's because it takes a lot of time and energy to reset the charges for those explosions. Of course, the safety of our cast and crew is our number one concern here on set. And that's where you come in. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a big round of applause for Sean. Sean is going to be playing the role of our brave mechanic. Your scene takes place deep down inside the belly of that PT boat. But fortunately for you, we've actually recreated the engine room right over here behind you, so you don't actually have to swim to get to the engine room. So you just want to hang out right there. My assistant director is going to get you set up in just a moment. Today we're going to be filming two scenes, but not the order in which they appear in the script. We're actually going to be filming them out of sequence. Which means that an actor may have to respond to a situation that's not yet been filmed. This could often be very, very challenging for the actor, so it falls to be the director to give them the necessary motivation to interact appropriately in that situation. First, we'll give them a second to get set up. Alright, so here's the setup. On action, that phone next to you is going to buzz. Right before, 800 gallons of water, dump out of those buckets, slide down that chute, and slam into you with the force of a freight train. Are you feeling motivated? Lucky. He's feeling motivated, which is actually a good thing. Because it's actually closer to a thousand gallons of ice cold water. But I find that there's a fine line between motivation and fear. Alright, roll playback and action. Pick up that telephone and call your captain. Tell him that you just lost both engines. You're doing whatever you can to keep it together down there. But it is possible that you're getting ready to take on just a little bit of water. Ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a physical effect. <laughs> you did a great job. And my next two, I want you to sit right there and act dry for us. Act dry. Yeah. Um, act dry. Thank you, Matt. You have a little bit more time to work on that, so we're just going to let him sit there and work on it. Our next scene is going to take place on the deck of RPT boat. Kenny's here to introduce our great volunteers. Hello, everybody. We have a war over the cap and Don and her wall the wagon deck and Paul. Let's give him a round of applause. The captain is going to be up. Thank you, Kenny. All right, roll playback. Captain, pick up those binoculars and start scanning the sky for enemy aircraft. You're on a routine surveillance mission. Thank you. Let's keep that boat ship shape using those windows and polish that horn.
down those ramps. Hello everyone, my name is Deborah and welcome aboard. We're Hi, heading Deborah. into the back lot of Disney's Hollywood Studios. This production area was built in 1988 as a Florida counterpart to the Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. We included sound stages, recording studios, high-tech editing rooms, all the tools needed to create movies, TV shows, and radio broadcasts. We've even got our very own water tower, too. It's up ahead, high in the sky on the left side of our shuttle. We call it the Earful Tower. It's inspired by the water tower Walt Disney had built for his Burbank studio in 1939. Our Florida tower stands a lucky 13-story high, and we added our own creative touch, a giant set of Mickey Mouse ears. If you wanted to wear those ears, you'd have to have a hat size of 342 and 38. Up ahead, after the next bend in the road, you'll have a perfect opportunity to take a picture of this famous icon. In the world of entertainment, every project starts with a screenplay and a lot of creative ideas. A production studio is where the ideas of writers, producers, and directors are transformed into an on-screen reality. Within these huge spaces, filmmakers can literally create their own world. Our Florida sound stages are soundproof, weatherproof, and most importantly, air conditioned. All vitally important no. for the cast, crew, and equipment. Many of the crafts needed for filmmaking are located right here on the lot. On the left, we have our own greens department. It grows flowers, trees, shrubs, and topiaries. A few well-placed plants can cover up empty spots in the set and add a touch of natural beauty to a scene. On the right are two of the aircraft from the 2001 blockbuster hit Pearl Harbor. These exact full-scale replicas of P-40 fighters were used in the special effects fight sequences. Of course, many of the planes you saw flying through the aerial battles or sitting on the ground weren't real at all. They were created entirely within a computer. Oh, keep your cameras focused to the right. We're coming up on that perfect angle of the Earful Tower I told you about. It's a true masterpiece. We're entering one of our most glamorous and colorful departments, creative costuming. Every star has to have just the right wardrobe, and it all begins here with a designer's sketch. Our team of designers, seamstresses, and tailors can turn one and a half million yards of fabric into over 25,000 costumes every year. Many of these costumes will become part of the shows and attractions of the Walt Disney World Resort. In fact, here in Florida, we have the largest working wardrobe department in the world. Why Mickey Mouse alone alone has over 175 different outfits to choose from, while Minnie Mouse keeps more than 200 unique costumes in her wardrobe. On the left are costumes worn by the stars in recent studio productions. You'll probably recognize some of these costumes from the big screen. Every story needs a setting, and our design staff can create just about any place the script calls for, from an urban city street to a remote desert canyon. On the left is our scenic shop, where large-scale sets and props are built. Our team of set designers, carpenters, artists, and engineers have created caves and patterns, game show sets, even replicas of the U.S. Supreme Court and NASA's Mission Control, all on our sound stages. The shop also provides sets and props for our shows and parades here at Walt Disney World. The same skill and craftsmanship that goes into a movie set can also be used to create magic for our parks. Either way, it's all about making dreams come true. We're entering a zone we call the Boneyard. It's an outdoor storage area for oversized props and vehicles, like cars, trucks, boats, planes. We often save these props in case we need them for future production. In this backlog collection, you may find real working vehicles, non-working mock-ups, and even large-scale miniatures used in special effects shots. Large-scale models create a more convincing illusion on camera. We even place small cutout passengers in the windows of the plane.
We are now passing by the sets of our Lights Motors Action Extreme Stunt Show. On the left, you may catch a glimpse of the Mediterranean fishing village that sets the stage for this thrilling attraction. We'll get a closer look at it soon, but for now, we're approaching one of the largest standing sets on our backlog. It's over on the right. It may not look like much from this angle, but it's pretty spectacular on the other side. Great, folks. The production crew has just given us clearance to enter the set. Hello, Backlot Tour. I'm Amy, a production coordinator here at the studios. I can see your shuttle heading toward our canyon set. I've given your driver permission to come in and take a look around. I'm up here with our effects crew, and we're getting ready to shoot a test sequence. Um, on the way in, you're going to be crossing a wooden bridge. Things may get a little bumpy, so please, hold on to your belongings, especially hats, cameras, and glasses.
Okay. Well, thanks, Amy, for giving us access to the set. On the right, we have an authentic piece of Disney history. That Gulfstream 1 was known at airports across the country as November 234 Mickey Mouse, but we just call it the Mouse. In 1964, Walt Disney and his hand-picked team used this plane to scout locations for what he called the Florida Project. Soon, they secretly began purchasing thousands of acres of land, which became the Walt Disney World Resort in 1971. During the creation of the resort, and later Epcot, the mouse shuttled studio executives and Imagineers between Burbank and Orlando, making it the most used executive aircraft in the country. Appropriately, the mouse retired here in 1992. As Walt used to say, it was all started by a mouse. In this case, the 234 Mickey Mouse. On our right, we once again sweep past the magnificent Mediterranean village of our Lights Motors Action Extreme Stunt Show. This high-octane attraction is based on a hit show from the Walt Disney Studios Park in France. In this action-packed production, you'll feel like you're right there on the set during the filming of a spy thriller, complete with custom-built cars, motorcycles, even jet skis. You'll experience the split-second timing, coordinated driving, and fiery special effects that make action movies a real blast. This saving area to our right is known as Acceleration Alley. Here, the custom-built stunt show vehicles rev their engines up to 70 miles per hour before making their high-speed entrances onto the stage for our Lights, Motors, Action Extreme Stunt Show. Of course, these are professional stunt drivers. We hope you'll enjoy their daring driving skills, but please, don't try them yourself. <laughs> On the left, we've reached our second boneyard with more historic props and vehicles. When we reuse older props in a new production, they're often refitted with custom parts and given a whole new color scheme. You might not even recognize them the next time you see them on screen. For instance, coming up is our friend Herbie the Love Bug. He went through a special demolition derby makeover. Those dents and dings were added on purpose, but he can be polished up as good as new for his next starring role. On our right, we now have a very different view of the fishing village set. From this point of view, you can see that there is no inside to the building. They are just false fronts, or facades. In the movie business, set builders only create what the camera has to see. It's an old movie trick dating all the way back to the silent era. To add to the sense of realism and avoid the cost of set building, many of today's television shows and movies film on location in cities and towns across the U.S. But out in the real world, you've got to contend with noise, traffic, and crowds, and various visual elements that may or may not belong in your film. Here on the back lot, we can avoid those problems, because we created our very own flexible urban environment. Our Streets of America facades can stand in for a small town or a giant metropolis. As we come around the last corner on our route, you'll see the skyline of New York City in the distance. It's really a series of painted flats, expertly designed to fool the eye and the camera. We can dress and decorate these streets to look like any city we want, from Chicago to San Francisco. Depending on the choice of vehicles, props, and costumes, we can even turn back the clock and set our story in a different time. And what's more, these sets are built with Florida weather in mind. They're made to withstand 100 mile an hour winds. You're welcome to visit our streets of America anytime during your visit today and get an up-close look at the skills of our set designers and builders. We've just about reached the end of our tour. Our final stop is the American Film Institute Showcase, where you can see the actual costumes and movie props used in some of Hollywood's most famous films. There are some pretty amazing items in there, so feel free to take all the time you like. Please stay seated until our tram comes to a complete stop and check around you for any personal items that may have fallen during our trip. Well, as they say in Hollywood, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining our Backlot Tour, and we hope that you'll come back to visit us again soon. Once again, please remain seated until the shuttle comes to a complete stop. Your one and only exit is located to the right of the blue sliding glass door is towards the front of the tour shuttle. You have one more chance to catch our Lights, Motors, Action, Extreme Sun Show today at 410.